since new cars are ridiculously priced these days, is the used car market our only hope? What should you consider before buying a used car besides mileage and the dealership? Well, in this video, we'll try to answer all those questions. Welcome to another video. Most people tend to worry more about mileage when it comes to buying second-hand cars. Ah, this one is a low mileage in China, it's fresh. Can't you wear, we are just buying a scrap. We will address the issue of mileage. For now, let's look at some of the other things you should look out for when you are planning to buy a used car. Number one is accident history. If you are a first-time car buyer, try to avoid buying cars that were involved in accidents, especially if it was a front collision, because most modern cars have a lot of sensors in the front end. And you can't just rely on the information you get from the dealership. You should inspect the car yourself or get a professional to assist you. Since you are here, let me teach you a few tricks you can use to spot a car that was in an accident. The obvious one is color. The color of the car must be the same all around. You don't want a cocktail of colors on your car. If you notice any slight difference in the shade of the panels, that's a red flag. With some cars, you may not see any color difference, especially if they repainted the whole body. So you must look out for overspray. For those who don't know, overspray is basically paint that overlapped to parts which were not supposed to be painted. You will normally find overspray on headlamps, grill, air inlets and fog lamps. Here's an example of overspray. Just look at the upper margin of the headlamp in this beamer. Then you should move on and assess the panel gaps. Panel gaps should be even all the way. If it is narrow in some parts and becomes wider as you go along the line, that car was in an accident. Some of the gaps are so thick you can put a finger in there. There's a lot of techniques you can use to spot a repaired car and if we can go through each and every one of them, we'll spend the whole day here. Enough about accidents. Let's move on to the next point. Mileage. I know most people are just worried about mileage over anything else, but to be honest, there's no rule that dictates what's the best mileage to go for when buying a used car. Generally, low mileage cars are the best provided the car has a clean history. However, there's no specific number of kilometers you should be targeting because mileage is not the same. 10,000 kilometers of normal driving is not the same as 10,000 kilometers of reckless driving. 10,000 kilometers of city driving is not the same as 10,000 kilometers of freeway driving. City driving tends to put more strain on the mechanical components of a car compared to freeway driving. In town, there's a lot of stopping and going, and that chows your brakes. Also, you may find a learner driver stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, riding the atlash, going atlash plate the whole town, and that's a strain on the car. For most second-hand cars, you can use 60,000 kilometers as a guide. Anything less than 60,000 kilometers is a green zone. Between 60,000 and 100,000 is an orange zone and anything above 100,000 kilometers is just a red zone. This is not a standardized classification though. It's just how I look at it, me, not personal. With some cars, a high mileage is not really a deal breaker, like in the case of a Toyota Hilux. You can buy a Hilux with 95,000 kilometers on the clock and push it to 200,000 kilometers without issues. But try buying a GTI with a mileage of 95,000 kilometers and see what's going to happen. The next factor is dealership, which is where we get to look at establishments like We Buy Cars. If you buy a car at We Buy Cars, you take it as it is. If it has some damage, you take it with the damage or whatever faults it comes with. But then the cars are separated into two categories, Category A and Category B. Category A vehicles are low mileage cars with full or incomplete service history. These cars look fresh and well maintained but we buy cars can't really guarantee for sure that they have no faults whatsoever. Category A cars can be financed through a bank 
and if your car is financed it is a must to buy warranty that is going to cover you for six months so if you are not happy with the car you can return it within six months provided there's something wrong with it and you can prove that to them however mechanical wear and tear is not covered and any issues resulting from misuse or reckless driving are not covered as well but now let's say you buy a gti from them and three months down the line your dsg gearbox is fucked up how do you prove whether the damage is due to misuse or not also if you return the car they charge you for usage let's say you return the car after driving it for 5000 kilometers they will charge you for those kilometers as if you were renting the car then there's the issue of the decra inspection the cars either get a gold or green sticker a gold sticker means the car is roadworthy certified and with a green sticker you have to first take the car for roadworthy test before registration and banks don't finance cars that are not roadworthy for those who don't know in sa you can't register and license a second-hand car without a roadworthy certificate when i bought my polo vivo the dealership was supposed to do the licensing and registration for me but they delayed and my temp was about to expire so I went to the traffic department to register the car myself in order to get number plates. And I was told I can't get my disc without a roadworthy certificate. So my disc was withheld and I had to go do a roadworthy test and bring the certificate in order to get my license disc. If your car fails the test, you have to first fix whatever that's wrong with the car, otherwise it's not going to be registered. Or you can so much just bribe the officials to give you a certificate without fixing the problems. I see a lot of registered scrap cars on the road and I wonder how did they pass the test. Now let's talk about category B vehicles. These are basically old cars with high mileage and leaky or no service history at all. The cars usually have known defects or mechanical problems which will require major or minor repairs before use. Banks don't finance such cars for obvious reasons. If you buy a Category B car, you don't get any warranty. And if the car gives you problems, you are on your own because of the food stools clause. We Buy Cars has a car finance offering called GOMO and they can finance a Category B vehicle for you if you wanna go down that route. All I can say is good luck may the odds be in your favor. What I can tell you is you shouldn't rely on the DECRA inspection report because that thing is just a marketing gimmick. The best way to do anything is to do it yourself. Hey, but there's some really nice things there by we buy cars. Nami, I'd be tempted to buy. For peace of mind, it is very important to make sure that when you decide to buy a used car, you buy it from a reputable dealership. If you buy a used VW Polo from We Buy Cars or Gestro used car dealership, you will have to take the car as it is with its defects. But if you buy it from, let's say, Master Cars, they recondition the vehicle before selling it to you. Basically, they sort out any visible or known issues and the car comes with a full service history. Also, you get other benefits such as warranty and roadside assistance, which you don't get when you buy a car from Gestro. Secondly, reputable dealerships will never turn back the mileage to trick you into believing you are buying a low mileage car. The next point is service or maintenance history. Avoid buying a used car that doesn't have a full service history, especially if you are buying a performance car. Also, don't buy used cars with cheap aftermarket modifications. The downpipe, the drop suspension, the engine chips, because those things usually void the manufacturer's warranty. And some of the mods were done by most Buddha under a tree. The headaches you're gonna get when things start breaking, you'll end up spending more money on Grandpa and Panado than petrol. We can't cover the whole used car slappers in one day, so we'll continue with this video next time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more car content in a Mzansi context.